Chuck, uh, at some other point, we talked about the moon. Yes. Now it's time to talk about the sun. Nice. I guess this, why not? Gotta right? like we the got, sun. You gotta, you gotta like the sun. I it's love me the some source sun. of all life on Earth. Well, Almost all, all life on well, Earth. Not yeah. all life, but mostly all. Yeah, life. there's some life at the bottom of the ocean. At the bottom, that, right. That never it, gets. That never even sees the sun. I wonder what that's like. It lives where the sun don't shine. <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the in the water where the sun don't sun shine. Don't so you know that has me wondering, what happens if you're just a fish swimming in the water, and then someone captures you, pulls you out of the water into the air, and then there's like land and mountains and sky and clouds and 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 direct sunlight. That's 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 the closest thing I can think of to someone grabbing you out of your dimension and putting you somewhere else. Right, but here's what's worse. They pull you out, but then they put you back in the water. <laughs> right? And now you're going around to all the other fish like, yo, man, I'm serious. <laughs> this really happened to me. This happened to me, man, okay? Like, first I thought it was some food, right? They grabbed my jaw, it wouldn't let me go. I fought and I fought. They pulled me out, man. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe, man. And then it was like, oh, this light. I don't even know what to call it. It hurt. It hurt like hell, man. And it was these things, the fleshy things, man. And it, oh, it was crazy. And it was like, like you know what? You know, like the bottom, what we see down the bottom, except instead of sand, it was like sand, but it was real hard. And and, and it was like puffy stuff above the sand. And it was, oh, man. Uh, why y'all? Dude, I'm not crazy. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what we're going to do? We're going to get someone to animate that and have an actual fish speaking those words, all right? <laughs> so, anyhow, yeah, so one of the things they get to really experience is the sun, and particularly if they live sort of, if they're bottom feeders, right? The sun is not a big part of their life, really. Right. Uh, so, so uh, let me talk about the sun. The sun is, uh, you know how far away it is in light travel time? Um, eight and something minutes. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, Chuck, you know, you're coming along here. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes 500 seconds for the light to reach Earth from the sun. So 500 seconds, if you do the math, it's eight minutes and 20 seconds. All right, and it's moving at the speed of light through the vacuum of space. So that's, that's kind of cool. And, but you know something, Earth's gravitational influence also moves at that speed. So, if some giant came along and plucked the sun from the center of our solar system, we would continue to see the sun, feel the sun, orbit the sun, until 8 minutes and 20 seconds passes. Oh, and then the party is over. Over? That's all like she wrote. <laughs> like you ain't never seen a party end. <laughs> <laughs> and so what then happens is the planets one by one will fling off into interstellar space and plunge into eternal darkness. Woo, that is a needle scratch if I ever heard one. Mm. And so we need, a, we need a sci-fi story where somebody just reaches in and plucks the sun out and just watches what happened and, and how we are in our blissful ignorance for eight minutes and 20 seconds. You know what, that's another great short film. It's like, you know, it. you show that and then you show like the beauty of life in real time of eight minutes and 20 seconds. And only you, the viewer, knows no, that that's, that's that all over all for everybody. To end. And by the way, they can't know that any sooner than w when it's too late. Because that's, right. that's that's the rate at which the information is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's so. Ooh, that's creepy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So the sun. Uh, this little tidbits about the sun. So maybe it might not be something you thought you knew, but it might be something you glad you learned. How about that? Oh wow. Okay. All right. So if you hollowed out the sun, so now you just have the volume of the sun. And then I sort of played a little basketball and started tossing earths into the sun. Do you know how many earths would fit in the sun? Uh, I know the sun is huge <laughs> compared to the huge. earth. Huge. Huge. I don't know how many earths would fit. Do, so take a guess how many? Like 10, 100, 1,000? Uh, no, I will say... 1,000 earths. Well, give me a number. More than 1,000 earths. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to... I'm looking at the scale models of all the... And uh, the things that I've seen. Of okay. Like, 
All right. uh, on the ceiling I, of your kids who did the, the yes, planet exactly. project. <laughs> the little planet things, you know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a hundred thousand Earths. Okay. That's a lot of Earths, right? That's I mean a hundred thousand Earths. So the actual number, the actual number is about a million. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's about a, a million Earths. Damn. A million. And so the weird thing is you go back in time before we had any sense of anything. And there are people thinking that the sun is just something else in the sky. But Earth is the, Earth is the, Earth is the thing. Right? We are, we are the center. Right. And since Earth and the moon are the same size on the sky, Earth and the moon had almost equal presence in our culture. Right? There's a moon god and a sun god, of course. You know, that there it was. And any illustrations of the two of them, they're the same size because that they look that way. But they're nowhere commensurate with each other. And it wasn't until much later that anybody figured out that the moon does not give its own light. It is only reflected sunlight. Only. So there's a geometry of things going on there. And by the way, some of that uh, comes from the Bible, where uh, I forgot which passage, but it's, and the sun, it's in Genesis, of course, and God created the sun to light the day and the moon to light the night, as though they are their own agencies of, of light sources. But that's, that's not the case. Plus, the moon isn't always out at night. Uh, so, and most, it just, it, an equal amount of time, it's out in broad daylight as it is out at night. So. So just, just, just saying. So, so a million times larger. So that is huge. The sun has blemishes, which we call what? Sunspots. Sunspots. That's Same, official. They're, they're like liver spots, except the sun has really good skin. <laughs> Chuck, wait a second. <laughs> Chuck. Okay. So, so the sun only occasionally has the liver spots, but has a really good dermatologist. Exactly. This is what you're telling me. All right. So the sun, so sunspots are about the size of Earth. So the sun has acne bigger than Earth. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's cold. That's, that's, that's. Uh, now, sunspots, even though they're dark, they give a lot of high energy radiation. So they'll give off a lot of ultraviolet and even, I, I think, some x-rays. I'd have to double check that. When the sunspot population grows, the, we say the sun is active. It's going through its cycles. The sun, it has an 11-year cycle. And it's uh, it, there, where there aren't many sunspots, and then there's a bunch of sunspots, and then there aren't many, usually zero, actually. And is then it, it goes back moody? to... Is it more moody? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I haven't asked. <laughs> Actually, well, no, yes, it is more moody. During sunspots, yes. Okay. yes? Because okay. during sunspots, not, not only is the sun radiate more, and this affects Earth's atmosphere, the atmosphere absorbs this extra radiation, heats up, thickens, and all of our orbiting satellites now have to boost themselves more back to their orbit because it, eats, it, it, it encounters more atmospheric resistance. Look at that. So we do that with the space station, with the Hubble telescope, and anybody else up there who wants to stay and maintain a, a, an orbit, a stable orbit, w during solar max, it's called, we're on the walk, we're on the lookout for a decay of our orbits because this, the atmosphere got thickened by this extra radiation by, by the coming extra from radiation. the sun. Oh, wow, that is really... Okay, so that's one that's moody thing. Cool. It's, it's messing with our satellites, okay? That's one bl sun blameable thing. What else happens is there are solar flares... Yes. So the explosions on the sun, and these explosions, the sun is is, is a is a is a magnetically charged gas, right? And the word for that is plasma. Plasma, yeah. Plasma, yeah, yeah. So so the, and magnetic fields are all entangled in there, and during solar maximum, the magnetic fields become so entangled they bust out, nice. and when they bust out, the particles of the plasma like hanging on to that magnetic field, but they get flung into space. And then you get waves of particles towards the Earth. There are always waves of particles. We call it the solar wind. But during these particular moments, when you get a solar flare, oh my gosh, this, the, the, the level of charged particles can be so high, it can short circuit the electronics of satellites when it reaches Earth. Wow. That's crazy. That's so awesome. So yes, the sun is moody at that time. I'm just making it clear. <laughs> okay. And by the way, solar flares can happen, but they don't always point towards Earth. We right. can see them, but the pat the plasma pi goes out into space. So it's the ones where there's a solar flare 
and it's headed towards Earth that we keep track of. Right. And in fact, NASA has a whole department called it's space weather. It's a space weather department. Gotcha. It's things that would affect astronauts in space. And it's not only the sun, it's also, is there anything happening in the rest of the galaxy? Mm -hmm. so, uh, this, so it's another thing that the sun is doing. Oh, I, I, one other thing. Go ahead. All right. Sunspots are always in pairs. Okay, I did not and, know this. And so Chuck, we measured it and one would have a positive charge, the other negative charge. So we got magnets on the sun. Nice. Just saying, uh, oh. but, but wait, there's more, okay? okay? The sun is a big ball of gas, so it's not solid the way earth is. And so it turns out the equator of the sun completes one revolution faster than other latitudes on the sun. Oh. So it doesn't rotate as a solid object. Look at that, because it's a big ball of gas. So the middle could be going faster than the tops. Yes, because yes, it's yes. Not, oh, that's well, just to be clear, it is always physically going faster because it has more distance to travel. Okay, right. So even if the sun were solid, it would be traveling faster the way equatorial residents on Earth, right. they're all traveling 1,000 miles an hour. Right. We here in the middle, like New York latitudes, are traveling only about 800 miles an hour due east because right. they, we both complete a circle at the, circle same, at the time, same time. They went a bigger distance. Right. So they've got to be traveling faster. Okay. That's the merry-go-round effect. The outer horses are moving faster on the merry-go-round than the inner ones, even though it's moving as a solid, rotating as a solid object. With the sun, the equator rotates faster. Now, that here's, here's the rub, so watch what happens. Because the entire ball is magnetically charged and there are magnetic fields within it, the magnetic field wants to hold on to the plasma. And the rotating sun says, no, you don't. I'm going to stretch you as I, what we say, differentially rotate. Okay, and as that happens, the magnetic fields stretch and stretch and stretch, and there's a point where they can no longer stay attached, and they snap. And this snapping, it's a very complicated magnetohydrodynamical mechanism, but the disruption of the orderly magnetic fields are what punches through to make, to make this, the, the flares on the surface of the sun. And when everybody punches out and they get it out of the system, the magnetic fields reconnect, and we start the cycle again. Oh, but wait. Uh-oh. But <laughs> it's not a uh oh. It's not a uh oh. Okay. But wait. Okay. Oh, by the way, the sun has a north pole and a south pole in addition to all of this, just so you know. Okay. But when the cycle repeats, the entire magnetic field of the sun has flipped. Oh, snap. So it's in fact a twenty-two year complete cycle, not an eleven year cycle. Yeah, yeah. That is amazing. That's the sun is doing all that while you're sitting out there, you know, on the beach. While, while I'm getting beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it does all that. And it makes me look good, too. All right. So let me, I got to quote Galileo before we run out of time here. Uh, Galileo said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because he said it more poetically than I'm about to recount. The sun manages to keep the planets in their appointed paths yet somehow manages to ripen a bunch of grapes as though it had nothing else in the world to do. Oh, that's, yo, that Galileo, he knew how to turn a phrase, that's for sure. And my boy was a wine drinker, so that's what he's talking about. I know. <laughs> he's thinking about <laughs> what else you do with them grapes. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty. That's so cool. that's all the sun I could squeeze into 15 minutes here. So oh man, that was hope that was enough for you. All right. So all right, call it quits there. Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>